When a planet is being invaded, you need to defend it with the best turret possible. Rebel Ashley, we've taken a look at invasion defense weaponry in Space Engineers. Well, today I am back with a brand new turret platform. That's right, we're kicking 2024 off with a bang. Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Space Engineers. Today we're taking a look at a QBR turret platform made by Reload and it is fantastic. This is a semi-automated defense platform for planet side protection. It can be controlled by AI, by combat engineers, or both. Now, utilizing the XBM twin and railgun turret for the primary weapon, the QBR platform is best utilized against larger targets when it can pierce the armor and take out embedded systems. I'd be surprised if you can shoot a fighter down with this one. All right, so we're in game. Let's take a look at this. This is the platform as you see it. Don't worry. I know you want to see it. We're going to be testing it against some ships very shortly. I know you all want to see the destructive power of this amazing build. Now, don't worry. For those wondering, yes, obviously, this is meant for larger targets. You probably could take it out with fighters. Thanks to one's ones we looked at previously that had no sort of like point defense cannons. Here, Reload's built in Gatlin turrets. These are going to be able to basically shoot down incoming missiles and also incoming fighters and things like that. Two smaller targets who are actually going to invade it. Now, Reload's actually fought through the potential of ground attacks as well. Because if you come in it this way, you're only really going to get hit by the Gatlin turrets. However, there are interior anti-personnel turrets hidden inside the base here as well. We'll do a full interior tour in a second where you can take a look at it as it's definitely worth it. There's also the antenna dish here as well, not only just for a cosmetic look to, you know, make it look more sci-fi-ish, but also you can connect to an antenna dish using Space Engineers' sort of connection relay things, and you can take control of the turret, which is pretty cool. Thankfully, the Gatling guns mixed with this sort of railgun turret that we see over here does allow for a basically sort of like fast tracking and constant damage output. You know, while these are recharging, you can be spitting bullets of them using the Gatling turret, which is pretty cool. Uh, the QBR does need routine check-ins to make sure the base has proper power levels in both reactors and batteries, as well for any repairs that are needed. I think space engineers just rolled in the weather. We're going to turn that off. Weird enough, it started raining, but we're not starting the new year with that. Let's take a look at this building in a bit more detail. So again, we have the communications dish back here. This is using the space engineer satellite, or relay dish as I like to call it. That's just built here. It's on a hinge block as well to get that sort of hinge look, which is very nice. We've got O2 farms here as well. There's also warfare batteries inside that are being used, and we'll take a look at those in a second. These are the back part of hinges here, just without the actual hinge element, connected to the back of the railgun turret, making it look like some sort of like energy buffer in a way. Still, the way the turret's laid out here is really, really nice. It is built on hinges, and of course you've got blocks down here as well, so sort of hide that all in, which is very, very cool. The sort of hatch or the covers here being used for a bit more design detailing. Even Reload has gone so far as to use the sort of wiring strips or the LED wiring strips to basically add a bit of detail here. You could have just left that blank, but still he's gone the extra mile, and it does look amazing. One thing I did like is using the new pipe blocks to create a sort of like, you know, almost like a vent going along here behind the gun. We are using the air vents, the animated ones are spinning, but also these ones just create a sort of vent sort of vibe that's going on. I really, really like it. You can't actually see much of a turret. If I have to sort of come down here so we can go inside and see how this is laid out, I turn my light on, you can see it's all sort of sealed away here. If I merge through a grid, you can see it's on a rotor block. Very nice and very hidden away. So, you know, if people are going to target that, hopefully it shouldn't take too much damage. But, you know, over time, it probably will need a bit of repairs and things like that. There's a staircase going down here. This leads up to the top part. I forgot to put some stall on here. By the way, when you spawn this in, this is what it looks like. So you're going to paste this in off of a Steam Workshop, a link down below, and you're going to need to put it into the ground like this. Uh, what I would recommend is once you find like a suitable position, like this, you get the sort of via voxel tool, and you sort of build around it like this. You can then add soil and make it look a bit better. That is the best way to do it. We'll remove that for a second. Um, I basically placed the block down, I placed this on top of it, and then I did some soil to make it look like it'd been here or put up. The reason why I use soil is because, for, well, rock wooden ply has been there for ages. I like to think they've just installed this weapon platform, so we use soil because that'll be freshly dug up and make a lot more sense. In terms of other sort of design work that's been going on here, we've got a lovely sort of sci-fi texture block going around the edge, sort of creating this sort of like futuristic block that's going on. Like if we look at it from this angle, it almost creates that sort of like powerful vibe that's going on. I kind of like it. Now in terms of size, this is a rather large grid. If I go on foot here, you can see how big this is when I walk up to it. There we go. I forgot I'm still wearing a cowboy hat from this other mod uh, we were checking out. If you want to go check out the cosmetic mod, we did a video back in December 2023. Go have a look at that one. Um, so this has got 7,579 PCU and the total block count is 1,612. Helpful if you're going to be building this on a public server or places where you're limited by block count if you're on Xbox and things like that. 
Walking in the back set of stairs gets us to the antenna dish. We can turn this on and off. I would like to be played with a hinge a bit more, but, uh, you know, I'll take it. That's kind of easy. Now, if we actually get inside it, we have to go around to the left here. Don't worry, we'll be taking a shot of those in just a minute. As we come under the side here, obviously, if you're invading this, you're going to be faced with an interior turret straight away. These things have good range and are kind of deadly to players, so, you know, be warned. In for the airlock door, I would left this one open, but you can reseal it for, like, double protection. I like having two doors here. Kind of makes the base a bit more protected. Obviously, we can pressurize as well. Inside, we've got warfare batteries running around the edge. I would like to, if we could bury these in a bit more. The interior did seem a bit slapdash in a way. Still kind of cool. It's functional. It's not a major concern. Still very nice. Conveyor pipes going along here as well. The conveyor pipes here are actually connecting to the armored ones. If we sort of go up here, you can sort of tell they are armored, which is nice. Into the internal command area, we've got four chairs. We'll sit in one of those in a minute. And if we go quickly upstairs to this little gantry area, very nice. You've got an overview of thing like that. We've also got the turret controller block here as well, which is pretty cool. Okay, down here, we've got the warfare reactors. When I first checked this out, I didn't realize these were the reactors because I don't really use the warfare reactors very much. I kind of forgot how they looked. Still, there's two here, and we've also got two over here as well. The AI block is there, meaning we can use that to control things, which is very nice. We have another turret controller block here as well, as well as access to the cargo container, which is very nice. But I know you all may see take control of the ship, so let's take a look. In this seat here, we've got the turret controller blocks, Gatlin's on off. If we press number five, boom, we now have control of the ship or rather the turret. I'm going to go into spectator mode, so you can control it through the camera. I should note the mouse is inverted, so if you go up, it will go down. If you pull back, it will go up like this. Da -da. Now, I know some people will view this as a weakness, but if we sort of just reposition our camera a minute and go like this, here, this is the only way you can arc up. You can't look straight up with the cannon. Some will view that as a bit of a weakness towards the ship. I think it's just what you get with this sort of thing. Uh, obviously, the Gatlins will protect it from any incoming targets, but if you were to drop something right on its head, it is probably going to be destroyed. So keep that in mind. You might set up a vast array of these, sort of spa spaced out. So, you know, if one was over on the other peninsula over there, this one should be able to target it by looking straight up and having that angle. That is just something to note. Okay, let's take a look. We're going to take a shot here. I need to go to this. I need to go to number five. So we are going to take a shot right at the ship and see what it does. Okay, everybody standing by. Right, F9. We may have taken every reactor a bit quickly. Whoops. Um, th that's not meant to happen. That's an interesting one. Somehow we shot one ship and brought three down. I think that's a bug in Space Engineers. Um, that's new. Is gravity just not working? Okay, we're back in control of this ship here a second. Or rather the turret, shall I say. If we press this, let's line it up again. We'll see how much damage this does this time. Well, we took a side engine. I'm not sure why it's floating down. I think SE's having a bit of issues today in terms of shooting stuff down, which is a bit annoying, um, especially when these ships still have a lot of engines functional. Fair enough, we took out one or two, but still. It's a bit odd. I'm not sure why it's crashing down so much. It's okay to sort of test this new railgun turret we're testing. Uh, I bought in one of Mr. Venom's ships. We're going to blow this up instead. That actually survived a hit. Did it go right through? I think it might have. There's a lot of damage sounds going on. Um, or maybe it didn't go through. Okay, I managed to sink the ship a bit more. Let's fire again. Okay, we did a bit more damage. So you can see how much damage the railgun actually does. This time we actually penetrated the engineering lab and or engineering base, I should say, and apparently broke a lot of stuff. Still, we kind of killed the reactor. So you can see if you had quite a few of these turrets lined up in sort of like good succession. So let's say if you had like two more side by side or like maybe one over here and one on that rock over here, you can easily take down an incoming invasion force in Space Engineers with ease. They would do a lot of damage and take it out. I don't think one of these turrets on its own would be a good idea unless you're protecting a small base. You kind of need like a good coverage area to be able to do a lot of damage. This ship, if we shot it about five times in quick succession with a couple of the turrets, things like she's sinking. Um, it might be. Uh, you'd be able to do a lot of damage. Still, by itself, not so much. If we probably fired up the Gatlin turrets as well, we probably could easily take the ship down. I think it is, that, it is actually sinking. Yeah, I'm not sure what we've done. Maybe we should just do it one more time just to, just to be sure. I think we might be charged. Let's have a look. We're not charged just yet. Okay, we'll wait to charge. But basically, my point being is um, you wanted to sort of fire all of these in quick succession. So I'd have multiple of these turrets installed. I will. There we go. We've done a lot of damage. Happy oh no, it's actually flying into us, I think. 
Well, this would be good. Um, so if you want to download the QBR turret platform by Reload, then you should head over to the Steam Workshop. Link is down below in the video description. And this has been our first main video for 2024. Happy New Year. If what I'm about to see in front of me isn't an analogy for how this year is going to go, yeah, that'll be an interesting one. Still, let's see how it goes. As I end up this video, I've been Captain Jack. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time, hopefully where we don't crash a ship into the thing we've been reviewing. If this doesn't hit us, I will be quite amazed. If you're looking for a space engine server to come and play, join my Discord server. The link is down below in the video description. And oh boy, oh boy, this might hurt. Well, this is the first. I'm going to be honest, this isn't how I saw this video going. Um, yeah. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.